Hey guys, we're back. It's been a while, been about three, four weeks. No, it's been about two since we released the last one. But um, yeah, we're back, back and better. Myself, Daps. Um, so guys, keep, remem keep remembering to like, subscribe, share all of the content, ball hour. We are gonna be coming up with more content as well. So stay up to date with that. Today, we've got a single guest in today. But it just means he gets more of the glory today. So we've got Jeffrey Monacana. Did I say that right? Yeah, you got it right. Monacana. Yeah, you got it right. Okay, and um, Jeffrey plays for Dulwich position. On the wing. On the side. wing. Is this your first season at Dulwich? Yeah, first season. Where did you come from? Um, so last season, uh, I was at Woolstone. Mm -mm. So we got to like the, we got to the same finals of playoffs. So then, um, I was just weighing it up, seeing obviously because I've been playing in the league for pretty much yeah. all pro career. So I was thinking, all right, cool. I couldn't look to make my way back in. But uh, with the situation that with Dulwich came in, it just made all the sense. Really. When did they come in for you? In the summer? Yeah. So literally right after the playoffs. So oh, okay. I was like, I was thinking about my age and I was like, I could wait off because I had teams in it certain teams in the league that I was speaking to um, obviously other agents coming in with offers yeah. but I was thinking with what the manager come to me and said to me and the way he was like chasing me down I thought you know what let me just go with this one was it literally so if you had teams in the league it, mm. it, it was literally down to Gavin like change your mind because for you to turn down the league and stay in you know like the non-league uh -huh. it must have been either Gavin really persuaded you or you're getting that heavy bag. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, yeah, what, what was that conversation like with, with, um, with Gav? Yeah, like, um, like I said, the, it's weird because the gulf is now becoming so yeah. much smaller. Mm. Whereas like, uh, like five years ago, maybe not even five years, say like three years ago, it was way bigger budget wise, mm. playing wise, um, how, how many times you train. Yeah, I think all of that's now is becoming way smaller in terms of you've got com conference clubs that are acting like league clubs mm. in every way. And that is so, a full time though. Yeah, really. basically, pretty yeah. much. So yeah, it's like for even that to happen, mm. that's crazy. So um, I think it's just all of that where they can, it's, some conference clubs can give you things that put you in positions that not many league clubs yeah. can or are willing to do let's say that yeah but obviously in regards to your ambition mm. it is to get back into the yeah list. definitely but I think um, I think uh, you got to be able to weigh up how you want to go into the league mm. I think uh, you can't because I've been there I know how I want to go back into the league mm. so um I wouldn't want to go back into the league how I started. How was that? So, like, grinding my way through um, financially, stuff like that, yeah. to get to where I need to. Mm. I wouldn't want to do that yeah. as of now. So I think, um, don't get me wrong, unless, like, a crazy opportunity came mm. where I could see it would 100% benefit me, then, yeah, but... Um, those are the I mean that's the type of way the only way I would do it would be in that type of way yeah. where it made sense okay so where did you actually start off was it Arsenal yeah so I started off at Arsenal well yes yeah, started well I was at Broadwater Farm with all Classford and everyone else did you say Broadwater Farm yeah Broadwater Farm as in the Broadwater yeah Broadwater they had a football team yeah 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 so oh, there was a lot of us. I was not trying to play against them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of us that came from there. Me, Jason Bantnan, oh, Brim Pong, um, Daniel Bolton. Um, yeah, there was quite a few. There was Peggy, Peggy Lucando. Yeah, there was quite a few. Mm. And um, obviously, class was done well. I remember one training session, he's come to me. I was training just like everyone else. And he's pulled me. I think I was eight or so. And he was just like... Um, uh, where's your dad? Um, I'm taking you to Arsenal. Yeah. And I was thinking, the hell, like, Arsenal don't even have a kids football team. I didn't know anything. Them, mm. like, coming up, you don't, you're just playing. You don't really yeah. think about stuff like that. 
Um, so then obviously that following um, day went up to Arsenal, um, um, met one of the chiefs at the academy, like the head of the guy at academy called Roy Massey. Yeah. Um, real nice guy. I, I, I don't know if he's, I don't know if he's still doing um, the academy thing. I don't think so. I know he's not at Arsenal, but I don't know if he's still doing it, but real, mm. real nice guy. Um, yeah. And then just from there, never really looked back. But I heard they handed you a four year contract. Yeah. How yeah. does that work at the age of 14, getting a four year contract? So, uh, so I, yeah, didn't was, they, was, I didn't even know they did yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was weird. Um, obviously you had, uh, the people above me was, um, uh, Jack Walshaw he just he got like a, a six year deal Mm-mm. then I think Bennett Kofobi he got yeah. like similar mm. so I think they were starting already obviously at round them times Chelsea started having the money Yeah. so Abramovich come in he started to put in the money mm-hmm. so I think like something happened between Chelsea and Arsenal and me that made them do that Yeah. so that's what I think and were you always thinking at that age that it's you're all you're just always gonna play for Arsenal? Yeah, you that's support Arsenal. Yeah, yeah. Okay. At, well, now I watch too much football to be fair to to be like I support one team. But like, really? if I want, yeah, like I I've, I watch way too much football for me to be like I or play like it's mm. different. Like mm. so, but if anyone that I want to win, it, it would be Arsenal. Yeah. So yeah, like that's the number one aim. Like going through, you go from nine all the way through you start to see things and think yeah do you know what I uh, I want to be like these like seeing like like Frimpong play for um, get into the first and that's someone clo- that was close to me there mm. seeing him play seeing Benick play seeing Jack play do you still keep in touch with any of these players uh, yeah well when I see them mm. it's more like when I see them yeah. so if I saw Jack I would speak to him if I see Hector I'll speak to him mm. if I see Serge I'll speak to him stuff like that yeah um so when you left, what was that like? Was it a thing of they just pull you into a room and say, "Look, we're not having you," or you kind of knew leading no, up to it that um, was going to happen? No, um, I think coming up to when I was like seventeen, my agent, my agent pulled me and he was just like, "Jeff, I'm telling you, if you play first team football with what you've got right now, mm. your goal." And I was thinking, what does that mean though? Because mm. I don't see myself playing first team football for Arsenal anytime soon mm. and he was like well I think you should leave them and I was like this guy's crazy like, mm. like, no way like why would I leave this and then over the coming months you started to see I could see what he was saying Yeah. so I was like to him so I said you know what like see what's out there for me first team wise and we'll try and I'll I'll definitely think about it mm. and when he the Preston thing basically come around yeah I spoke to Liam Brady and I said like look I want to I want to leave and he was like like Liam again real good guy like helped me a lot yeah Um, legend yeah got a lot of respect for him he was like look like it's tough out there yeah like (laughs) like like leaving Arsenal is is for you to even say them type of things is crazy yeah I wouldn't do it I would just stick it through and see what happens and stuff like that. And yeah, I could have I could have done that, but I chose that path. In in hindsight now, do you think that was maybe the correct? I'm not saying whether mm. it was or wasn't, but do you look back thinking maybe I should have stayed or do you look back and think, you know what? I needed to do what I needed to yeah, do. Yeah, I, I still think I needed to do what I needed to do. If I didn't, then I wouldn't have gone through the things that I've been through mm. or like, do you know what I mean? Get to them playing that, being 18 and playing at 18 yeah. in men's football, I yeah. wouldn't have done that. How old are you when you went to Aberdeen? Uh, 21 maybe. And what was that like? Was that yeah, so, a massive club up there? Yeah, so when I got told about that, um, I didn't really know too much about Scottish football at mm. all, if I'm being honest. And I didn't know how big Aberdeen was mm. until I got there. And... Um, and uh, I remember my first training session, like everyone was looking at me like, this guy is whack. Like <laughs> he's super dead. Like, <laughs> and like, <laughs> and uh, like, they, like they used to do like the worst trainer. And uh, <laughs> on my first uh, 
first session, like we was it was a we was preparing for the Europa League game in, yeah. against Real Sociedad, and they gave me the bib for the worst trainer. I was like, oh my days, yeah. this is not the way you want to start. But that's headless straight, yeah, right? straight, <laughs> straight away. I was thinking, yo, so uh, <laughs> and uh, even in the running, like I dropped out first it, before the keepers. So like, um, but where you were coming from was mm. there a massive? Were you coming from Preston then? No, I was coming from Brighton. Okay, so was there a massive gap in quality them times? No, for it was you just to be dropping out of the running and stuff like that. It was just the fact of like, I didn't know too much about Scottish football, mm. so and about Aberdeen. So I went there with a thing where it don't matter what I do, I'm yeah. gonna play. Yeah, and uh, I always say that to to kids growing up now in terms of like always be not humble but mm. not not in sense of humble but always just work as hard as yeah. you can like never think that everything's granted just yeah. to you like that like you gotta grind for it and uh i think um just coming through i just thought it was just gonna fall at my feet mm. type of thing and the good thing is that at aberdeen they got me into that mode of actually grinding so they made me stay mm. after training mm. every wednesday yeah do crazy running and it started to like yeah, like day by day then I started to like now everyone in the team is now respecting me mm. I'm getting that do you know what I mean so the fans are like till this day I still get messages from fans there so were you still were you still getting worse trainer bibs than that no, no, no. <laughs> that, that end like I think after yeah from that first time after they started getting me and I started actually grinding mm. through now because I even got ill as well so oh, I was well. out for like a month with illness after that as well so when I came back from that and then that Wednesday training, like that running was ridiculous, mm. but it got me to that tempo where I was like, yeah. And then from that, everyone respected me from there. And how, how long were you at um, Aberdeen for? So I was at Aberdeen for like uh, six months mm. and uh, it came to January and, uh, and um, Chris Hewitt was like- I was it a loan move? Yeah, it was a long oh, move. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So Chris Hewitt mm -hmm. was just like, Chris Hewitt got the Brighton job. Mm -hmm. And he was like, look, you can come back um, if you want to. Mm. Brighton were like near the bottom of the table them times. Yeah. So he was like, look, like, I do want to see you. I'm hearing good things up there, but it's up to you. And obviously Aberdeen were like, look, if you stay, because we were top of the table them times. Mm -hmm. So I sat in with the manager and he was like, look, if we stay, um, um, I'll 100% play you more. Yeah. And at the end of the at the end of the thing uh end of the six months so he wanted to get me on a loan again for six months oh, no, no. Okay. so then he would uh, at the end of the the six months it would turn into a perms mm -hmm. so we would talk uh contractual terms so i was just like well in hindsight in hindsight i probably that's the only one where i'm like maybe i should have stayed that one because mm. what we were building team wise being top um the way we was the way it was going if i stayed who knows do you know what i mean who so you end up going back when Chris so i ended up going back mm. and like when i went back i see like because i i always say like in that place because everyone was fighting for their like positions this is brighton we're talking about yeah no at, uh, aberdeen because aberdeen. Okay. everyone was fighting for their place mm. training was so intense yeah so it went into the games yeah so you had like johnny hayes who's at um, so he got bought by he's at Celtic now he got mm -hmm. bought to Celtic after and uh, now I'm again on the right mm -hmm. so he's like a uh, he's like a legend there and um, I think he scored in like the Euros for Northern Ireland or something like that or World Cup or one of them so um, it was them two that was in my position more mm -hmm. or less and I'm pushing them to get in so yeah. I'm coming on doing my thing so they can see that mm. so training is now up in yeah. so it's going onto the pitch where like we're winning like by three four nil and i'm thinking these these men keep <laughs> do yeah. you know what i mean but it was good though that because that's what that's how you win stuff where mm. like everyone knows like n no one's place is secure so, so did you manage to get any games in europa or did, did you No. so by the time i uh, so we played um i was supposed to i was they were trying to get me done for the Groningen game um, that they won, but mm. I couldn't get it done. Then I made it for the uh, Real Sociedad game, but manager didn't trust me. 
No. That's fair dues, because I was absolutely dreadful. Yeah. <laughs> but did you get to, were you just not in the squad at all, or you didn't even get to uh, travel? The or? first one I was in the squad, I tra- that's the one we did when I trained at, uh, in Real Sociedad, the stadium. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So um, I trained in that stadium with them. And then at, uh, at home, the home uh, tie, mm. uh, I was on the bench for that. So I didn't come on in that one. What was what's, what was the whole experience like or traveling away for like a, a European match? You know what? When I think about it, because I was so young, you're naive to it. Mm. So I think like a lot, like if you ask any of the, let's say like York Sancho, like what's the experience like? Yeah. I don't think he'll be able to tell you yeah. because he's living in that moment. Do you know what I mean? So it's not like, you don't sit there and think, I'm in Europa League. Yeah. You just think like, okay. But if you look back at like your time there, would you think? Yeah, you, you looking like, back. Mad. Yeah, looking back, it's, I don't think you can, uh, it's hard to say, because I, I don't think you can be in that moment mm. and be, and look back on it, if that makes sense. Yeah. So you don't, you don't sit there and actually take it in like, it's oh, only when you come is, out of it. Yeah, yeah, it's only when you come out of it. Like, you don't sit there and think, oh, there's Griezmann, there's Carlos Vela, mm. there's this, there's that. Oh, yeah, they so, were at Sociedad, Yeah, so you it? don't sit there and think that. You just think like, okay, like, they're there and I'm here. So, watching Watching Griezmann and Vela up close, them times, could you see the quality straight away? I know, I know Vela, obviously, you mm. can see the quality, but... So, Griezmann, Gri- I don't think, because Griezmann was going to go to Atletico. Atletico, mm. So... I don't know if they allowed him to play, but he was, he could have played. Mm. So when you're training, uh, he's obviously there. So like he was in and around the building. Mm. So just seeing him, his demeanor and that, you're just like, yeah. But watching Carlos Vela play, yeah. I was like, yeah, this guy's serious. So you just see like where you want to be. Yeah. Like seeing the way they played and stuff. Like over there, we got absolutely bopped. And I was like, <laughs> Yeah, this is the levels. Yeah. Like that's top like top La Liga side. So seeing that type of level, you know, all right. But again, you don't really I don't think I looked at it like, oh, I can't play there. Uh, especially because like you're playing and literally yeah. next game got to look look towards next game so you yeah. can't even dwell on that. For, yeah, for and, too long. and 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 that and that Pataudry, we actually outplayed them. Mm. For they uh, luckily for them, they got the goals. They got the away goal. Yeah. to kill the tie but yeah. uh, I think we got one I can't remember what the score ended I know we got one goal I'm yeah. sure it did but I think from that game is when I knew okay Aberdeen's serious because yeah. that place was absolute that's one of the atmosphere wise mm. I don't think uh, yeah atmosphere wise I don't think I've ever played like, talking to you like this yeah. I'd have to speak in your ear to to uh so you could hear me yeah like oh, it was it's, that it's just, loud that loud like I've never been in something like that that was crazy and it gives you like a, a, a buzz what, was it just for that match or in general it was I think more for the, don't like every time in Pataudry it's kind of like that because obviously because you're top of the table mm. like it's sold out every single time 27,000 mm. or whatever it I think it holds 25 or 27 one yeah. of them but that's uh, uh, that night there that noise there crazy like yeah. with the Vuvuzelas and stuff like that you couldn't I couldn't I literally couldn't hear I couldn't hear nothing oh, I was like absolutely love yeah that, this is I was like okay like I understand what Aberdeen is now yeah. and and with Dulwich on new team obviously it's not 27,000 mm-hmm. but Dulwich actually have a mad fan base yeah 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 so how do you find their fan base and how they've received you since you've been there yeah I think um uh like I said this is why in you can never speak in hindsight if in hindsight I never left and experienced first team football so young, mm. playing in front of three thousand people sometimes could intimidate people. When yeah, you're thinking, oh damn, like it's three thousand people. I think now, like because I played under such numbers, mm. it doesn't really phase me. Type yeah. of thing. So I think for non-league, it's unbelievable to have win, lose, draw, three thousand people coming through your gate, two thousand yeah. five hundred stuff like that. That's unbelievable. I I haven't I haven't seen that yet. Yeah. In especially not being a relatively big club like a team mm. coming down that's been in the leagues and come yeah, down, yeah. that's kind of expected. Like let's say Notts County, for instance. If or, they come down, you know, yeah, you know I mean, like, numbers, or like yeah. York City, mm. stuff like that, where like I think they're in Conference North and that's a big club. Like mm. they were in League Two 
in the playoffs, but whatever happens, they've been relegated all the way to Conference North. Yeah. But they're still at home taking like five thousand, or they they even building a new stadium, like new twenty thousand or something stadium. So crazy. It just shows like that's in Conference North mm. as well. So like that's a massive club. So for Dulwich to be able to come from like where they came from, yeah, like which is super super low. Like basically like something like it's like Broadwater Farm mm. coming up to Conference South. Yeah, no, they they done well. 2,000, 3,000 people from mm. Tottenham go to their game, win, lose, or draw. Mm. That's 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 unbelievable. That's crazy. That like, Gavin has done a massive, yeah. massive, massive job there. How do you like playing under him though? Yeah, like with him is intense. Like uh trust me. Gavin's like Gavin can have them um the moments where you're like, What? But <laughs> you respect him. Like I mm. have a lot of respect for him where I'm like, yeah, like what he's done, like he can always, he'll like, I'm, um, like he, like he'll nitpick. Mm. And I always say, when someone nitpicks, it makes you think. So for me, that's a good thing. If mm. you're nitpicking at me, that means you care mm -hmm. type of thing. And um, um, he's already nitpicked at me. And I've been like, okay, I've took it on the chin mm -hmm. and just try to work on what he said. So I think um, for everyone, coming up like never always take uh criticism too harsh mm. sometimes just learn from it in terms of like okay he may want you to like like i, pro I could probably say that like, he wanted me to he thought i ignored him um in a uh when we were playing like we was i was i was playing and he thought i ignored him mm. and i didn't ignore him it's just that i probably couldn't hear him mm. but that's sometimes me, I'm thinking to myself, okay, maybe I need to be more aware uh -huh. of my managers there. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So like, or someone else could take that as like, I didn't ignore him though, like, oh, like yeah. but that's not professional. Do you know what I mean? Like, you're gonna get that in your job where you may think something, mm. but your boss is saying, no, yeah. this is what it is. You gotta learn to take that and be like, all right, okay, I may think that, but do you know what? let me make him happy in terms of being, maybe just be more aware. Yeah. I may still not listen to him. Like mm. I may still not hear what he's saying, sorry. Like I may, st like he may say something, I may still not hear it. But if I'm still showing that I'm aware to yeah, him. Yeah, I, I think it's sometimes just acknowledging. Yeah, yeah. that's it, just, that's it, just, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, just, uh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's it, literally that, that's it. So, so I think that's the, them little things. Mm. So what's, what are your expectations personally for this like coming season? I think promotion, that's the number one thing. I got close last year. Um, where were you at? Like, oh, where, Willstone. Where, where, yeah, Willstone. Yeah, so I got close last year in Conference South. Um, we was winning 2-0 and Woking came back, beat us 3-2, which I don't know how they did that. Um, so yeah, I think definitely promotion and especially with the, um, like the recruitment that Dulwich has done this mm. year that has to be the aim. And there's gonna be teething stages and stuff like that early yeah. on. But in the end, I think promotion, that's not- In terms I'm of like goals, whatever, I mean, are you looking to, have, um, you, got, have you got a figure in your head that you'd yeah, like to hit? Yeah, I think every every footballer has a figure in their head that mm. they wanna hit. Um, mainly for me, I just wanna, uh, first and foremost, focus on just playing well each game. Yeah. And then off the bat, Playing well, winning games, and off the back of that, hitting targets. Yeah. So if I can hit my targets while doing that, then that's perfect. Because I think with anyone, like, it don't, okay, don't get me wrong, you can score 12, 13 goals, but if your team's bottom of the table, mm. it don't really mean anything. Has there been a game this season where you've looked at and you thought, hey, this, was, this game was a really, really good game, or like, what game sticks out so far this season, even if it's a loss or a win? The brain tree one? Did you play against Brintree? Um, no, I was injured. Oh, okay, cool. I was injured. Um, I so Femi can get his. <laughs> <laughs> um, or has there been anyone in the league that you've come up against? Or I'll probably say Willstone. Willstone this season are looking very, very, very good. Like mm. the football that they played. Um, so I think um, they've gone on again from last season, like with a smaller budget. Mm. They've, like, cause I think they, uh, had to chop the budget mm -hmm. so with the budget that they, they've got to be able to 
do how well they're doing is yeah. real good. And um, the football that they played against us was, even though we won 1-0, the football that they played against us, I was like, yeah, they look real good. Have you bagged this season yet? Yeah, I've scored. How many? Yeah. Just one. Just one. Just the one. Just one. So who's who's the, the main guy in form in your team right now? I'll say Millsy, uh, Danny Mills. Um, luckily, if he... <laughs> This guy is just living off in a back stick. Just every time he, talks, <laughs> every time he sees her, he's just like, "Yeah, Jeff, please, you know where I live. You yeah. know where I live. Just pull it there." So basically, I, he's just been. I've just been like helping him, just put it on a plate for him, mm. and he's finishing it off. So we, I, had, I used to have a coach um, years back at Potter's, Danny Bailey. You know Danny Bailey? Yeah, yeah, yeah light skin guy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Danny Bailey used to just say, "Daps, when you this one, I used to be on the wing, mm. Daps." Put it back post, whoever, whichever striker's there, 20 goals a season, back post to mm-hmm. them. 20 goals. So now that you say that. It's if- literally that, because obviously from my thing, I've always been known as like a good crosser of the ball. Mm. And uh, when you're playing with someone like that, who's basically a giant, mm. you know any type of good delivery into the area. Yeah. Because me, for I always aim for areas. I don't mm. aim for person. a specific yeah. person. Unless like I'm at the, how can I say it? unless I'm looking across mm. where I can cut it back to somewhere where I can see them. But more time, I pull it into areas. I always yeah. say that's the best way to cross. Yeah, I, I think if you are if you are crossing into areas, you've done your job. Yeah, yeah. If, if the striker's not there, yeah, yeah. They're, not, they're, they're not doing their job. Yeah, you know I mean, and I think once you have that understanding with your striker, because mm. I think I've got like four or five assists, I think once you have that understanding with your striker, you can get, you can get that understanding already. Yeah. Where, you know, he knows, yep, I know where he's going to pull it. So, let me already get there. So mm. I don't even have to look now. Yeah. I just pull it, I pull it into that area and he's there. Do you, um, that's not like a silly question, but do you love football or do you see it as almost like a job? No, I think, um, no, I still, still love it. Um, I think it is a job. It is a job, but you still love the game. Like where, like playing on a Saturday, like if I didn't play on a Saturday, I don't know what I would do. Mm. Like. It's just like, even like in the summer, I was itching to get back to pre-season. Like, mm. A lot of people don't itch to get back to run, but you want that, you just want to play. Yeah. Like, I think that's the key thing. And um, you see it, no footballer, like some people say, yeah, it's just a job, this is that, but no footballer's happy on the bench. Mm. Like, I don't know any guy that plays football in whether that's Prem all the way down, that's happy on the bench. There's not- Jeremy, back in the day, remember it. <laughs> Jeremy was, I'm telling he was you, happy. There's no <laughs> footballer. There's no footballer that's happy on the bench. Every anyone that says that is a liar. There's no way because everyone wants to play. Everyone mm. wants to. It's like it's like school days. It's like you even like in school you're not playing for nothing. Mm. But if if you don't get picked to play, you're gonna be raging. You're gonna want to play. So it's yeah. the same type of thing. It's just fortunate that you're getting paid for it. Yeah. So would you not look at? How so? You've left Arsenal, mm-hmm. gone to Aberdeen, mm-hmm. Brighton. Well, I went, I went to Preston. I mean, no, no. I'm just saying, like, yeah. in in general. So you went Preston, Colchester, somewhere along the yeah, line, right? Yeah. Like, so would you say that going through that, and obviously you've seen, not politics, but you've just seen how football works or mm-hmm. whatever. That like sometimes it could take take it out of you, like in regards to how much you love it, or do you just look at it and just think, well, it's just part of the game. Yeah, um, like I said, I got injury. I got like a a mad knee injury that stopped mm. me playing for like six months and I literally said because I had I had a meniscus one with my left knee mm. when I was at Brighton so I was out for like six months then I did something similar to my right knee yeah and I was like through that time I said I need a break mm. and I stopped football for like six months and just to like recover my like let my body just recover were you before. playing like for a team at, at no, so I signed for I signed for uh Cheltenham Okay. And then as soon as I, I got, uh, I, so as soon as I could do the papers, I'd done my knee. Yeah. So I literally had to just, I literally said, you know what, forget this. Yeah. Let me just rest my body. January, I'll look to come back. Yeah. And um, through them six months, that's when you start to realize like, if you really love it mm. or you're like, oh, I don't I don't really care about it. And through them six months, I, I could see like, no, nah, I still like this game. Like yeah. I have that hunger to play. And um from that situation, that's it. That's when it got into that mode where it's like, do I go into the league? So I had offers straight off the bat mm. when I was fit. I was, was going to ask that, yeah. Yeah. Do I go into the league? Now it's like, I have to start all over again, pretty yeah. much. And it's like, 
I was willing to do it, but only if it made sense. Mm. So what made sense to me was Sutton. Was Fingy still there? Eastman? Yeah, he's, he's still Eastie there. was there, yeah. And Rory. Rory was there at the time. Yeah. That I went there. Because that was the time when they got to the quarters of Arsenal. Okay, so would you ever go abroad and play football? I played abroad. Oh, is it? Yeah. Who'd you, who'd you play for? So, <laughs> so when I was at Brighton, mm. um, I had six months left on my deal. Yeah. And um, um, my agent come to me and he's like, look, I got I got off you in Romania. And I was like, Romania? I said, but I don't know about that. He said, well, they're looking at uh, doubling your salary. Yeah. Tax free. And I was like, what? I said, tax free? He's like, yeah, he's like, for six months. So I was like, yeah, I've got to think about this one because that's not an everyday thing where you're doubling your money tax free. -free. So um, I said, you know what, let me go out there and see it. So I went out there, saw it, spoke to the president, and I was like, not president of the country, the president of the the team. They call it, they call it the president, it's like the chairman. Yeah. So spoke to the president and he was just throwing crazy things at me where I was like, yeah. I don't think I can say no to this one. And um, in hindsight, again, I should have stayed. Mm. That's one thing I, I, I regret doing. Like now you see everyone, when I first did it, when I first did it, everyone was like, you're mad. Why are you going yeah. overseas? Mm. Why would you do that? And but from going out there, I could see the blueprint. I could see what could happen. Mm-hmm. Because for instance, like in my team that was there, you had um, 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 Wilfred Moke. He's now at, uh, he's now playing in Turkey yeah. and the Congo national team. And he was nowhere near it. Um, you had another guy, I forgot his name. He went to Stal Bucharest. Mm and played against Man City in the Champions League. Yeah. Uh, you had another guy in the league. He's at, um, who did Arsenal play in um, Europa, uh, Europa, where was the Europa League final held at? Karabag. Karabag. Uh. He's now at, he, he went to Lens. Mm. then he went to Karabag. So basically he could have just, it's a good stepping stone to. It's a, like people don't understand the European, like, that's just saying now people understand it. Mm. That's why you see like the Liverpool uh Gerard's cousin, Gerard's cousin or whatever, fighting to get out of Liverpool to go f- Florentina. Fiorentina or whatever. Five, five, six years ago, that yeah. would never happen. People weren't looking to No to go chance. Abroad, what, people would be like, so what, you're gonna leave Liverpool to go Fiorentina? I'm mm. never doing that. But now people understand what it means. So mm. look now, there's another guy from Arsenal, went to PSV, scored 13 goals. Now he's worth 50 million. There's the one that's gone to um, Barcelona, the young boy. Yeah, yeah. another one. Young boy. So, ooh, uh, uh, um, another one from uh, from Arsenal, um, Mavidi, gone oh. to Juventus. So, oh, really? Yeah, went to Juve. Wow, do you even know that one? Do you even know? Do you know? No. He went, Steffi Mavidi. He went from, he was on loan at Charlton, Preston. I he's think went, Juventus. And he went Juventus from wow. Arsenal, basically. So, I think this would never have happened if like yeah. people don't understand it now. Now mm. agents, like English agents, now understand it. Mm. So they're like, no, nah, trust me, you're good enough. Don't play 21s. Mm. Do what you're doing for 21s for my first team here. You'll be worth 20, 30 million in two years. I think that's what a lot of, and a lot of people don't understand as well. Like, even if you are playing non-league here, it's not like you're not good enough or anything, but if if the opportunity to go abroad is there, even at non-league, I honestly think a lot of people should Yeah, be. 100%. Hun- just coming from experience, mm. 1 million percent. Because again, a lot of foreign teams don't watch uh, League One and League Two. They don't, mm. they don't, not even, they don't even watch it. They don't respect it. Yeah. That's the, that's the real of it. They literally do not respect it. Mm. Like, because for them, it's like, what league was you playing in? Uh, league One. What's that? The third league. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, what's that? Yeah. You know what I mean, but in the third yeah. league, you're making, you can make double. Like, let's say you're playing in Sweden, for instance. Someone in in League One is probably making triple what someone 
in the in the prem there is making mm. but they're playing in the prem like to for someone like ac milan for instance who would they rather take a guy that's playing in the swedish prem against malmo and stuff like that who's playing in the or Champions someone League, in league one or, or someone in league one mm. it's a no-brainer you know what yeah i mean so and they're cheaper right. so that's mad. how it works mad but yeah it's been interesting mm. um we're gonna go into your um all Star 11. I don't know if you've seen this before. So basically, you have to give me who your all time 11 would be, past and present players. So, not not that you played it, it could be if you played with them, to be honest. But you know, if you feel like Bert Leno is your best keeper ever, then you put him in your in <laughs> goal. So, entirely up to you. So, we're going to start with wait, what formation are you going to go with? Uh, ooh, it's a good question, though. Um, I'll go four, two, three, one. Four, two, three, one. Okay, go. Who's your who's your keeper? Uh, um, you know what? Let me go, Dida. Oh wow, Brazilian. Yeah, yeah let me go with him. Okay, cool. Left back. Ashley Cole. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's Ashley Cole, bro. Yeah. Right back. Mm, you know what? I'll say Kawuka. Really? In my team. Oh, I don't even start with that one. Yeah. yeah. Centre backs. So Campbell and John Terry. Okay. Um, no Rio, no Vidic, no Van Dijk. No. Okay, cool. Like they're two holding. Um, Vieira. Um, and Xavi oh nice and the other centre mid in the hole um, it's actually a different team isn't it than what we're used I like this it's a hard one because yeah I'm going to have to leave him out then yeah I'll say Ronaldinho 10 in the hole oh, okay cool Left. Henri. Oh, someone getting left out here. Right. Ronaldo. And up front. Messi. Okay, cool. So, just so we're clear. No Zidane. No Zidane. No Boss R9. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. Oh, I, do you know what? I, the only reason why he deserves to be in that team, but I just can't take out Henri. Yeah. For me. Enough. I'm not even mad at Henri, but it's just yeah. mad to leave. Like, yeah. But I can't. Man, I, that's what I grew up on anyway. Yeah. So, so we're like, gonna this go, is more of a team that I've grown up on. Yeah. So we're going to go Adida, Ashley Cole, Kyle Walker, Sol Campbell, John Terry, Xavi mm-hmm. and Vieira. I'm rating that one to be fair. Ronaldinho in the hole, mm-hmm. Henri, Ronaldo, Cristiano Ronaldo, and Messi. Messi. I mean, it's not, it's not really a bad team. It's not really a bad team. Yeah, that's how I did it. Like I said, yeah, that's how I did it. Yeah. it that's, that's literally, you could pr- more or less say that's a 2000 team, isn't it? Yeah. The Dida, could you say that? Was he in the 2000s? Sure. No, he wasn't. Of course he was. I'm um, sure he was. Um, early 2000s. When was the Champions League final? The Liverpool, 2005. He was in it. Yeah, he has to be. Yeah, so I'll say that's a two that's like a two thousand team. Mm. So that's what I grew up on. No, how old are you? Twenty five. Okay, cool. cool yeah, cool. yeah. Well, all the best. I really hope that this season goes well for you. Thank you, man. Hope that you get back into the leagues or go abroad, whichever one what is your preference, would you say? <sighs> like I said, I don't know. Like just see what happens. See what happens. Like mm. like, I, like I said, I always get little comments from like old teams that I've been at yeah. that come back da, mm. da, da, da. but um, who knows like I think one good thing would be to go back to uh, Preston one day like that's where for me that's where I see where I started yeah. and where the actual love properly love come from did you do well at Preston? yeah 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 so that's where I went to Brighton from is it easy to kind of sort that out if you've been there before and or does it all depend on who's there now and no, I think it like I said the the 
people that are at the top are still there. Mm. But um, I think uh, like playing for Preston would mean more to it's like it's playing for Preston is like playing for me is like playing for Arsenal. It's yeah. like where I started. So like playing for Preston is like going home mm. almost. So like that's like something that like that would be like one dream to finish off or even like just to play like just in front of them fans again. Yeah. That would be like a dream. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure you, you you can get that. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. Get me. We'll so, um, yeah, all the best for that, man. Um, hope you score lots of goals this season and all of that good stuff, man. I wish you all the best. Thank you for this. Thanks, man. Guys, keep liking, subscribing, sharing. Hope you've enjoyed this. We will be back next week or the week after. Next week. We will be back next week. Um, so, yeah, guys, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. We're out. Love, love, love for that, man. Uh, you know, he was meant to be. He was meant to be.